Mercy School, which meets at 9.30, uh, we are going through what we call 40 days of love stories. The greatest love story is the story of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Amen. And then that love story becomes a part of ours. And, and we are having different individuals uh, to come and share their story, their love story of how they have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is young Lyle Ushery. He's very young. He's only about 21 years old. 21, 22? Uh, about 30. 30, okay. <laughs> 30 in the Lord. And uh, where are you originally from, Lyle? Well, uh, I was born and raised over close to Augusta, but I spent most of my life in South York, which is not a town called Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald. Have you ever heard of that? Look at that. Look at that. I'm surprised. I thought only. <laughs> Uh, who's a part of your family? Um, you got a wife? I'm going to tell us about your family. Uh, I got a wife, Janet. She loves to be here today, but she's having to work. I've got two daughters. One of them, Beverly, is here today. Okay. Maggie's well, unable to be here today because she has to work. But, okay. Uh, I thank God for the three of them but because without the three of them, I probably wouldn't be here today. I don't feel like that. Right? Well, why don't you share with this kind of mind? About this time of year, 1981, uh, Janice and I have always sort of struggled a little bit with our finances, and I was working a job night shift, and because uh, we couldn't afford a babysitter, uh, Maggie, the youngest, had been put in the bed with me, and she was like two years old, to sleep until I woke up from going to bed late at night, and then I keep her during the day. Well, this particular morning, I heard her, the first words she ever spoke, Daddy, Daddy, you. We were living in a mobile home, and I looked up, and over the door, smoke was boiling. Now, having the house burned down while you're sleeping <laughs> will get your attention. I got her out of the house, set her down beside a tree, and was trying to get my wits about me. I wound up with her and a pair of old ragged blue jeans and a pickup truck is all I got out of that. But it dawned on me that I had done nothing in my life to deserve to live through that fire. I should have been gone then. And that started my search. And I started, you know, at Janice's insistence, she come on, you need to go to church for me. I had resisted for years. I said, okay, I'll go. But don't count on me going every Sunday now. I'm just, I'm just going today. <laughs> and little did I know that she and the two daughters that were both already saved were constantly praying for me. I found that out later on. Amen. Uh, I kept going as I began began to put together why I had survived the fire. I knew there was a reason. I just hadn't yet figured out what the reason was. It took about two years. In the South Georgia, I, I don't see much of this going up here. We have in the Baptist churches what we call revivals. They're really just uh, intensive preaching and prayer meetings last about a week at a time, and brought to our church, was a pastor, and all I can say is we had a more traditional pulpit. It was flat and straight, and when he stood at the pulpit, he was a little short fellow, and he'd stand with his fingers over the, over the pulpit like this, and uh, all I could see over the top was a big nose, a bald head with a little hair sticking out. <laughs> if, any of you, if any of you know who I mean when I say Kilroy was here, that's what he looked like. That's all I could think about the whole time I was listening. But, and if those of you don't know who Kilroy is, look him up on Google. I found him the other night. But he was giving a message for a night there in that revival meeting. And he paraphrased James 2.19. You believe in the devil? Or you believe in God? Well, goody, goody for you. The devil does too.
too and trembled at his name. It was just like lightning struck me right there in the pew. I realized that even though I knew who God was, and even though I had tried to live what I thought was a good life, that I had not consulted God, that I, I had not really paid any attention to God, and that for some reason I had to start a relationship with Him. That night I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And I realized very soon that the modern term is, I got this, which was how I had lived for 32 years up to then. Uh, doesn't work because he's got this. That's right. You know, I learned that being a new Christian, and as time went on, being, I hope, a little bit more mature Christian, you begin to realize that being a Christian is much like being a physician. It's a practice. You're never perfect at it. But when you're imperfect, that is the perfect one to take up the slack. Amen. Amen. I can't think of any major accomplishment other than, you know, I did get through school before I was saved. But no major accomplishment. And some of the accomplishments that I look at now that I think were major accomplishments, you may not. But I have the satisfaction and the knowledge that those things were accomplished through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way to live a good life is to have a good partner in that life. And that partner is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lyle. Appreciate your testimony in the Lord Jesus Christ and lift up his name as he continues to change all of our lives. Just a moment, we're going to ask all the children up in the fifth grade to come down and sit right down here with Pastor Ben for a little time together. And each one of you stand and let's greet.